its turn to pick. Drow Ranger. Alliances turn to pick. Bat Rider! I, I can't. Yeah. Thank you very much, Red. Indeed, myself and uh, Blitz uh, next to me. Uh, we're ready to go for game two. Game one, Blitz. A little bit of a shambles from some of the showing of, uh, of Team Ten Secrets players, but room. hopefully game two, they'll be able to step it up a little bit more. They're trying something different here. They're pulling out an MV Drow strat. But at the same time, I look at Alliance's lineup. They've got a lot of ways to deal with the Drow. Yeah, they have a lot of gap closing, like Kevin talked about. They've got a lot of different stuns. They've got the ability to get in there. And that's what Drow players hate, when you can just close the gap on them really easily and make it easy for uh, the rest of your teammates to get in there too. But the one downside of Alliance's lineup is, really, this just kind of feels like a single core Slardar. Like, Void is not reliable to farm with. There's not a lot of synergy between uh, Void and Slardar as two cores. Obviously, Jakiro and Phoenix pair up quite well with them, but... Still, if it comes to the ultra late game, I sort of think I favor Secrets lineup. This mid game is going to be really dangerous for them to fight around. Yeah, this is going to be uh, obviously a very crucial game as well for Secret. They drop this. This will be the end of their run in this tournament. So we can indeed expect to, to see them giving it the uh, just giving us their all. And as soon as well, I mean, how much of a fan of you are you of the clock this patch? As the panel said, it's yet to be a real hero that we've seen again that's been like, wow, the clockwork is amazing. Can it work? So I was criticized a lot for miscalling the Ancient Apparition, but before the game I told Durka, when a hero like Clockwork or AA, yeah. they first get put into the meta, those are heroes that you can't just pick for every situation. What it really takes is you have to find these specific set of conditions, like you need to have some sort of create space creator with him, uh, like the Doom, that can help abuse the heroes on the enemy side. I'm not sure if this is going to be the Clockwork game. I'm always a little bit skeptical about this hero, but maybe there's something about this uh, hero that Alliance or Secret have sort of figured out that will make it work, but kind of going to be rough. I think this is mainly just because they don't spread farm out very much on this team. They really need Universe to make things happen without any measure of farm, and that's probably why. In the game that we saw previously, it didn't quite work out because he almost had to have farm because they only had that single core, but now they spread it out with the dual core. And I think this might be what makes it work. Okay, well, yeah, indeed, as you said, the way that they're landing here is secret. And I've got this control uh, for, for Bulldog Sailing once there's a few levels on the line. Uh, the mid lane, uh, this matchup we saw in game one, RTZ on his puck, did kind of, got some decision in the team fights. He was getting picked off a lot, but the laning stage was fantastic. It was full all us, you know. He was absolutely destroying S4, uh, but that was a very different situation. A puck versus Tiny, Invoker versus the Bat. I mean, how do you see this playing out in the mid? I think Invoker isn't going to be able to get too much farm just because the Bat Rider can almost always constantly use the Sticky Napalm. It's going to be incredibly hard for him to trade off of. And I really like this decision, by the way, for Alliance to not play that greedy four position. They want to make sure that this clockwork is useless in this game. Oh, to see on the bottom. Bulldog. Again, just being fended off by Envy. Bulldog's he's getting the levels, but in terms of the CS, it's going to be hard against this uh, this duo. And uh, top lane, Puffy came up, wandering in, but Aka will be quick to force him back with the harassment from the Phoenix. and. Was the mid, it's as you said, S4, he is certainly having a, a very nice time against Arteezy's Invoker at the moment. Yeah, this is going to just be a lane where there's a lot of kill potential on the side of the Bat Rider, coupled with the fact that the bad turn rate from the Invoker doesn't really allow him to trade hits very effectively. That's always going to be what determines it for a Bat Rider versus anyone matchup. You can't really get uh, hits in because you can't ever turn away. You have to be hard committed to that. And uh, to deny the rune, no S4 oh. flame breaks him. Uh, yeah, very nice to deep press for. Nice. He's not letting anyone else take those haste runes that he holds so closely to his name. Bottom lane, Bulldog. 
Again, the slaps in onto Envy. There'll be a rotation back in from Pi. That's the time walk down. But also he's going to go for TP out. Pi, he's going to be able to cancel this one here. This is an awkward situation, but Envy can't help out. Yeah, Envy not moving forward indeed. And so they won't be able to get any damage down. And uh, yeah, worth noting as well. Look at this top lane. Loader. 12 for 12. I mean, this clockwork just seems to be unable to do anything in the lane at the moment against this, this try lineup of Alliance. It does have three denies though. Quite surprising and still doing okay. Has grabbed his level two. And Universe always just trades out with EGM, not allowing him to cast really any of the dual breaths directly on top of him. And he's keeping both supports up here too. And neither the supports, because they're not getting any kills, they're running into the same problem as they had the last game. They're just going to get behind in levels to this dual lane at bottom. You can see Puppy as well at the moment. He keeps kind of rotating around towards this top. Now he's got his eyes back towards the middle. It looks like he's just maintaining. Uh, he doesn't want to give jungle. up that creep, but is ultimately forced to. I think once you yeah. go past two creep waves, you think, okay, just got to get what you can. Taking Pi into the mid as well. They want to try and make a guy in S4 by the looks of it. I uh, see. So he hasn't got any points in Firefly yet. At the same time, he is saving one and, and does indeed still have that haste rune. So, secret three heroes around the mid, but not really able to do anything about this Batrider. Again, he just continues to lay down those stickies. Even without a whole lot of kill potential, you don't want to get stickied more than three or four times. Uh, it certainly seems that uh, this matchup still, 18-7-66, uh, thanks to kind of the presence of Puppy, it looks like that's been enough to, to allow Arteezy to catch up. Just making S4 being a little bit more careful about the way he plays. He's trying to grab himself the rune, and he will, but with the cold snap, the right clicks, oh, okay. There with his Sunray, the heals. Keeping S4 alive, and S4 will be fine, gets himself away and just manages to avoid letting Secret get themselves that first blood onto him. Thanks to AK's rotation. With that haste rune too, he's going to make his way all the way to bottom, find the invis rune and gonna allow him some more opportunities yeah. to get aggressive on this mid lane. At the same time, Invoker's still getting more CS than the Batrider, quite surprising. Oh, he's cool, but yeah, he's, he's recovered really nicely, hard teasing. Yeah, this is a lineup or matchup that I thought he would struggle oh, with a lot more. Oh, Bat is in trouble with the Sunstrike as well. This could be a first blood and all. This rune, boys. <laughs> S4. I mean, that man and his runes. Hey, you don't get luckier than that. You really don't. He's gonna go to the jungle, try to stack for himself. Fortunately for him, there's only gonna be one of those creeps there. This puppy has already eaten one. But looks like he just wants to go back to base, expend his mana and his HP, try to be as efficient as possible. And load of course, working towards that armlet. And uh, he'll have it in very, very good time at this rate. But at the same time, you know, you look over to MV, he himself, he's getting just as much from the Drow Ranger. As, uh, as we can see, 35 to 13. The lane's starting to get pushed in, and with the rotation of Pi, P as well, maybe they could try and get onto Bulldog. If they can get the lead in Hex, they could have a good shot of it. Not quite hitting level 6, but it might not matter with the Scorch stuff. The stun into the Sun Strike. There's your first blood. And very nice, of course, as well, that Arteezy will get that killing blow. So he's going to get himself that golden XP. And the best part about that kill is that you deny Bulldog all of this free experience that he would have had otherwise in this lane. That's why you notice Loda up the top. He's pushing in past the creep wave to make sure that the clockwork doesn't just get free farm. Is the bottom as far set up? He's the ultimate available if they just TP in one more hero. Right, let's see if they can catch out here. They're going to focus. Focus on to Pi, allowing Bulldog to get in, looking for the bashes. Oh, Envy's turning around now, starting to punch into S4. s 4 has got to be careful, you know, this level 6 throw, he certainly punches. One more touch, oh, not quite enough. But Bulldog just turning around, man fighting against the side of Secret. He's got a time walk in a second. Can he finish off Puppy? Jumps forward now, Puppy is able to duke it out to the south. MV. they're looking for Bulldog here. Bulldog, he's, he's in a lot of trouble. If he gets a bash, if he gets a bash, he won't. He won't get the bash. Puppy teasing him there, giving the vision to Envy. And Secret do find themselves a second. s come back into this one. And with the lasso, trying to drag him back. Puppy's still around with the Scorched Surf. And he'll kind of play it around the side, get the burn damage through. They'll lose Envy. They'll get S4 in return. So a little bit scrappy there. I mean, is it worth S4 throwing his life away for uh, for the Envy kill? Because I no. mean, a lot of space is being given to, to RTZ mid as well. Exactly. And he was able to set up for two of those Sunstrike kills. So it's not even like they really lost tempo. They still trade, they lose the mid hero as a result, this slows down his blink dagger a little bit, and more importantly, like you said, it's gonna give free farm to this invoker who 
nabs two of those kills at bottom that they set and up. And he's for. got a seven minute Midas now at all. Yep. Normally this is going to come out a lot later, especially considering the start that he's had. The good news though for Alliance is they have gone a lot more levels on these heroes just because they were able to rotate mid. Jakiro's already hitting level four. Same time the Phoenix is in a similar uh, position. And just even two or three minutes ago, they were so far behind in levels. Oh, this is certainly looking better again. We saw this from Secret in uh, game one. They did have a strong laning phase, and they're just unable to transition it into a, a reliable mid game with some questionable decisions. Oh, we'll see if they've learned from the mistakes, and, and with this kind of different lineup, they can make uh, it's gonna be a little oh, bit more too successful to happen. Pi very nicely as well. Ignores the boy, goes for the lockdown onto Ake. Very, very smart play and choice there from the line. That and again, it's another kill for Invoker. I mean, RTZ is, he's going to be, he, as we can see, he's getting so much. He's already 1k ahead of S4's Batrider. Yeah. And most of this is just coming from his team, setting up yeah. for him with the line. Really is. Very well done by him. Although you're going to look at the score if you're not watching the game and think RTZ is creating a lot of space. But this has mainly come down so far to Pi's initiations, finding the angles around heroes. So far, they've been so successful. And this is going to free up the map a lot for them and somebody has to come deal with mid and at the same time universe finally starting to grab those levels up at top that he so crucially needs he really really does it's still been alliance really just holding strong on their safe lane mid lane look at this going in again s4 in a lot of trouble he's gonna go down another kill for rtz it really doesn't get better than this for the invoker coming up to nine minutes in and the amount of kills that he's had at the early timing on that midas i mean if you're alliance what do you do to slow down Artis's progression? Because he's surely really. getting out of control. You need item timings more than anything. Even the Void Chrono might be a little bit iffy. They're probably going to need at least two or three heroes there to be able to kill it. And Admiral Bulldog looks like he wants to set up for it. But if he doesn't get that successfully, and the Dro just continues to farm up at top, Universe can start to make things happen with his hook shots. And Alliance, they're going to have to come out in a big hurry. Similar situation as they were in the mid game uh, last game, where Batrider needs to get the Blink Dagger before he makes anything happen. So instead, it's going to be Loda that makes the rotation over. It looks like they want to invade the jungle. They know that Envy's there. Nobody's showing at bottom. And they might actually find him here as Envy fears that cliff, though. And great game sense by him. Yeah, and from the side of Secret as well, they're all coming around, mate. You've got the full five man here. So if Alliance do decide to take a fight, that will be back up. Chrono's going to get dropped on Envy. But look, Secret already rotating in. Universe trying to get him with a, with a hook shot. Envy can't even kept alive. He's going to walk himself off. They're trying to turn around. They nearly get Ake. He has to get out with the hex on to board up high. Initiating the turnaround. They found Ake as well as he burned out. So two kills for Secret. And as we saw there, you know, Alliance desperate to fight. But Secret, they had the full five man ready to return. Turn. And at the end of the day, it was just a bad initiation, really. Chronoing off the draw on the back line, and they weren't able to kill him. And uh, Secret got the perfect wraparound onto the remainder of Alliance's side. And that was an amped up draw. You figured that she would go down quite quickly. This was a smoke gank by them where they rotated both those cores in, and it didn't work. Instead, they lose two heroes. I mean, that really kind of seems like uh, the mistake that Secret made in game, in game one, you know, fighting around a tier two just getting a little bit carried away, too desperate to find something, and then it, it really buying them in the foot. And, and now you're suddenly losing objectives. And and Secret are going to be starting to climb a fair amount ahead of you in terms of the net worth. We'll see if Alliance can fight here, though, as, as they are all grouped around the mid lane. Oh, no, no, no real kind of jump potential yet. Did S4 finish up? The, yeah, he's got the blink done now on the bat. I mean, it kind of all lies on S4. We saw in game one how much he was able to do with the blink on Tiny in terms of just catching members of Secret off guard. He's, he's got to do that again and bring his A game here in game too really they're gonna need this bat rider blink like you yeah. said to make a lot of space for them because secret they can just passively farm if they want this invoker can go to the ancients he's gonna have the midas he's gonna naturally get further and further ahead the more this path this game goes passive and secret they can still get aggressive they've got hook shot into the sun strike they've got different combinations to work out as long as these three are together these core three heroes they can even sit behind envy in this situation go for the push out maybe even wait for s4 to get aggressive here but alliance going to farm a little bit, slow down the pace of the game for themselves. Trying not to get into another scenario where they have to make thing happen without that bat rider. And uh, Secret, you know, with this pushing power, they can afford to do it. They just go up onto the tier one. They will take it. I'm going to be interested to see what uh, EGM goes from this Sekiro, because we've seen a lot of different ways this hero has been played. You know, kind of the classic is the yours, but I feel like more often than not recently, we've seen bail into Aghanims, and sometimes even just straight Aghanims rush. I mean, do you expect EGM to keep it kind of El Clasico with the yours and all universe whiffing the hook shot? 
And uh, yeah, that's the, the, that initiation is not going to happen. So yeah, what's the plan for EGM now in this current meta on, on the Jakira? What's the optimal build? He could decide to just go for the point booster straight away. Which is exactly what he's going to do. So, so will he then finish that off straight into the Axe or could he still go back to other items? I still think he goes for the Axe here. Yeah, I think just straight Axe now. It just feels good as a support when you walk by, you've got a thousand gold. You don't really need Arcanes on a hero like Jakira. It sort of just adds up and makes sense as they're going to go for the trade, but that's a tier two tower. Normally what uh, the dire side will go for in that case is go for the Roshan immediately, but not really in a position to do so. They don't have somebody that can tank for them. And this game comfortably is so far secrets. And mid game, we thought this was going to be where Alliance came online, but even with the Batrider Blink Dagger, because of the defensive position that Secret have taken, it was a little bit too difficult for them. So we're having a few uh, connection issues here with Pi. We're getting back in, but yeah, this this kind of momentum from Secret, it's it's scary when you just look at yeah the, the value that the RTS is walking around with. You know, he's nearing onto 8k. It's uh, it's a good clear 3k ahead of both the bat and of course uh, Loader Slardar. You know, Alliance, they they really need something big. I mean, maybe they can find it with a Chronosphere, but it's just gonna be a question of whether Secret gives them that opportunity where that where they are gonna be all grouped up because at the moment Secret is uh, certainly stepping up the play from game one. In game two. It is going to be difficult for Alliance to rush into that because of the clockwork. You've got a lot of naturally tanky heroes. Yeah. Would kind of like to see somebody grab something like a four staff to try to help Envy out in the situations where he does get gone on immediately. Of course, Envy might not even be the issue here. Like you said, Invoker does have so much farm on him already. Level 11 easily leads this game in both XP and net worth. And Envy's not too far behind either, considering he doesn't have that Midas. This top push, though, is going to force one of the heroes from Alliance to come back in. That might actually just prompt Secret to immediately go mid, try to pressure that tier 2 tower. Alliance aren't going to fight. Here we go. We've got Pi back in the game, so we should be uh, able to get ourselves back in as we just enjoy these uh, beautiful shots of the players. There's S4, man himself. He's, he's in the zone at the moment. He is ready to get back in and Envy, yep, close that tab, son. Let's get on with the game. Thank you, Jackie. Let's go. Here we go. Game two continues. It's eight for two at the moment. It's uh, 12 and a half minutes in. As you're saying, it's going to be hard for Alliance to find that real big swinger um, to, to bring this one back round at this stage. But at the moment, they're just avoiding the fights. Look at these pushes. They look at this tier one. They scan the sidelines just to make sure no kind of counter jumps are uh, going to be there for the secret. And it won't be in D, so they'll get away with this one. They'll send Loader back up to clear out that top wave. Continue to get the farm on the slaughter. But uh, secret at the moment, I mean, if you're secret, I guess you've just got to try and make sure you don't do what you did in game one at this point. You've got the lead, you've got the edge. Don't go any f for any kind of those plays that, that are going to come back to punish you pretty hard. Oh, Lodo up at top. Does get hit by that Sunstrike, but armlet toggles. And yes, you are correct. In that mid-engagement, remember when they were going for EGM? Yeah. They failed the hook shot, they immediately disengage. I think they're a lot more disciplined in this game. They're playing out their lineup to its strengths a lot more than they were in game number one. In game number one, it felt just a bit off because they have a Spectre, they were rolling in the lanes, and then they just felt like they had to make something happen. And now this game, they're playing a lot more patient. Look at this, a down. wild track has been found. EGM walks around the mid lane and Puppy and Pi. I'll be quick to saw that out. I think they might even decide to go for this tier two mid. They first have to deal with bottom though, as that'll probably be the invoker sent down there. They should defend this though, it's five. This is an easy defense for them to make. I guess this is the thing as well. I mean, in comparison to Secret's lineup, Alliance, all they're pushing kind of just rests on EGM Shakira, really, doesn't it? Yeah. EGM has to be kind of that front line for them is Batrider plus Slaughter and Void. Those aren't cores that you want to commit to hitting towers. Yeah. Those are cores that you simply want to keep back, and that's why Shakira as a, as a pick makes sense. The problem with Shakira, though, is when you get behind in games like this, it just feels like you don't have a whole lot to do outside of farming. Absolutely. I mean, they've now got that blink dagger turn on loader, so we'll maybe see if they want to try and make some uh, plays happen with him leading in. And in fact, with this movement from the base, yeah, smoked up. They want to do something big with the blink dagger reveal. It's just a question of whether Secret's positioning is going to allow Alliance to find that jump onto them. They move into the jungle. Secret, three heroes down at the moment, but already you can see playing very defensively. Keeping Pi and Universe behind the tier two. Puppy's already made his way back over to the mid lane, so. This presence of Alliance, that they're not going to be able to find a kill off the back of it. I mean, Roshan's up, but again, Alliance's lineup 
I, they've got the amplifier, I, but still, it's not going to be the quick, quickest of roast jams. And Secret will be very, very happy with fighting around the pit. So Alliance realize they're not going to find anything. They just back up and, and just continue to farm out on their cores for the time being. Secret just taking control of the jungle yeah. as well. They're making sure that they're getting the max amount of efficiency. So far, that has happened in Alliance. You've got two Blink Dagger cores. We already argued that they don't have the best ways to combo one of these cores with the Faceless Void. Your Void's starting to really fall behind in farm. The death knell of this hero right now is that he's behind the clockwork in net worth. Void obviously being a little bit more farm heavy. Oh, look at this ward as well. This could set up a beautiful hook shot. It really could. If they come round here, a universe has got the eyes on. Who's he going to go to? Ah, the blink out there from S4. Uh, actually going to focus their attention towards Loader. They've called him out. He's on his own. Doom, everything. Drops onto the fish. And that is Loader gone. So we talked about them wanting to do something with the smoke, with the blink down reveal on Loader's Slada. That's been revealed, but it's not him finding the initiation. It's Secret jumping onto him. Bottom lane, Bulldog goes for the Chrono onto Heavy, but Arteezy on the sideline just punching into him. Can they kill this man? They've got the lasso dragging him in. They should have a good shot at this one with the Supernova as well. Envy taking low. Arteezy as well trying to get himself away from this Envy. He'll get caught out by the stun. They'll take him down, and at the same time, they found themselves a second. Exactly the two kind of pickoffs that Alliance wanted to find, and I mean that was that was pretty much just what RTZ and Envy on their own on the side lane, and the Secret weren't there to back them up. Yeah, maybe they, me and RTZ thought that those two alone, because they had picked off the starter, would be able to hold the line right there. But this is still a lot of team fight on yeah. the side of Alliance, and it just feels like that was two lives kind of emptily thrown away. The Secret were on the other side of the map; they were establishing control in the Alliance jungle. You notice all the wards are in that area too. They didn't even have a ward past that line at bottom. They didn't even see the initiation come in from Bulldog. Can't allow things like that to happen. Maybe if they have the ward up on this cliff, uh, then maybe there's a play to be had right there. Even then. It's going to be hard as well for Secret Current now. You know, you've got this gem on Batrider. We've seen a. Uh... For secrets warding, especially around the jungle, you know, trying to get this vision so they can set up for like universes hook shots and stuff. So if the S was able to take those wards down, it's going to be a lot harder for Secret to move onto this half of the map. And that was kind of one of the, the weaknesses of Secret in game one that we saw. There was a lot of times they were fighting against the high ground, they didn't have the vision up, and that was when Alliance were able to turn around and, and hit them back very, very hard. A Secret were just a little bit too desperate to find those fights. Still though, the numbers are looking good. You're looking towards Arteezy. Uh, be it did, did get picked up on the bottom lane, but he's still mi still miles away, miles ahead in terms of farm at the moment. He's got a 4k clear of S4. It's a uh, pretty significant amount to be had at 18 minutes in. Still in a very good position, just has to continue to play this steady farming game. Not really in a position where he wants to make a go of it, especially alone. You can allow your teammates to set up. We saw the most successful he's been so far is whenever he gets the sun set up for these Sunstrike kills. Mid lane. Well, just time walking back. Pi or Universe unable to find the lead in. And uh, RTZ just continuing to, to push out these lanes to clean up the jungle uh, of Alliance. And uh, find his way towards Dan Agnum Scepter, which he is going to very, very shortly have done here. Pi. The ward out, but straight away with that gem, S4 taking it away from it. Very important word for them to place, just because yeah. you want to try to get vision around that area, make sure that uh, you can go for these sneak roach attempts and nobody from Secret sees you. Most importantly, because that bottom tier 2 is one of the few tier 2s up still for you, it's going to be natural to fight around it. We're just scanning out this area at the map. Oh, secret, they're just seeing if uh, if Alliance were heading, uh, heading into the Roshan. Obviously, it's just a little bit away after that D ward that they that could be the case, but Alliance uh, they don't look to want to try for Rosh. I mean, do you, with this kind of lineup, do, do Alliance need to try and find a pick off really before they commit to Roshan as a, as a full five? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Again, Secret's lineup, they can close gaps really quickly with that uh, clockwork. Then, if Universe gets a really good hook shot if into Cogs by that Roshan pit, you can see him do a lot of damage right there with that Blade Mill. No BKBs on the side of Alliance so far. So probably have to play a little bit more careful than you like. But they have done the right thing. When the game gets a little bit passive like this, try to gem. Make sure that you're at least winning in the vision game, if not the farm one. Yeah, and then this is going to be big as well. I mean, look, looking towards Pi, he's, he's been playing it safe, and, and now he has pretty much got that money for the Blink Dagger. 
and having that blink against some of these yeah, high mobility heroes. And a lot of heroes, they're going to be looking to jump in and jump out. Uh, it could be very nice for Secret to start the fight with the Pi getting the lockdown onto one. And we're knowing Pi, he, he will be able to find the angle to, to catch out multiple heroes with his positioning. And uh, Jakiro EGM, he's got the four staff though. So, so obviously if he's not going to be the one jumped on, something to try and back his teammates out of the fights with if they do get jumped on by Pi. They are setting up around mid. And the Lions just trying to clear out their jungle with the gem. They've got to push out this top lane though before they want to make anything happen. The secret, because they haven't pushed out this lane immediately, get scared for a second, but now with Hero showing up at top, I think this will prompt them to get around the map. Hmm, the secret themselves. Buying up this Roche, and I mean, both teams that seem very, very. Very scared of going for it, whilst the other side is, is still in full strength for live. Alliance coming back over. Bit unlikely they were able to, to find anyone from inside the pit, because both teams just bit refusing to enter, enter the area at the moment. Just keeping themselves back, and it, it just begs the question of who's actually going to be the one to find, find the jump on the other, and who's going to be able to utilize this kind of stalemate timing of the game to, to their advantage. I mean, we can see Alliance pushing out the mid lane a little bit whilst having S4 in position on the side. Any lineup that just features a single core, uh, the Void and the Slaughter obviously not really being one positions that you necessarily want at some point, especially with this hood build that Bulldog decided to go for, and Loda just hasn't been able to farm too much. So in that situation, of course, you would like Secret's lineup. Yeah. They, can, they can afford to passive it out because your Invoker has a lot of room to grow. He has very definitive power spikes. Same with his Draw Ranger even. And the two supports uh, from Secret just have a little bit more impact when it comes to team fights. And look at this one on the side here. Still hanging around. Uh, they'll spot him out. The question is, do they want to try and jump in onto the bat? Uh, so they don't want to here with a hook shot. Holding it off, but now they will. I mean, yeah, S4 is miles away from his team, and he's gone. S4 teased them a little bit too long, and Secret, they'll jump on him. I mean, Alliance have backed up, and S4 still... And they have Vision with the Rocket. I right, said so no, no escape for the Bat, and without the Bat on the map, this is a good chance for a Secret to go for the Roshan, and looking at Alliance's positioning, I guess they just realized that uh, trying to jump in without the Bat Rider is, is a pretty much impossible task. No, I think this is a Roshan that is very free for Secret, especially after yeah. that back kill. And they understand how S4 wants to play. Some of these players, a lot of these players played with before on that old Secret roster. They know that he likes to try to go for these jumps on stragglers. His team has a lot of different ways to follow up, but instead they continue to deny and just frustrate Team Alliance. And it seems to be working at the moment. It really does. It, it, you know, 23 minutes into this game compared to game oh, one, it top. seems like a totally different... What a way of playing, indeed. I mean, this man, Arthur, he's going to be very, very open to going for a play onto EGM. If EGM comes out a little bit too far, the pings. Actually, from Puppy. Maybe telling Arteezy to be safe, stay back. But now, I mean, EGM has come rather far down this lane. Four stuff isn't going to save you some. And they'll pick themselves up another one. And going the way of Arteezy, once again, on his invoker. And we really see our thing at this point, that's just the cause of Secret Envy and RTZ. They are ahead. And it's kind of questionable whether Alliance is going to be able to get themselves back on top. And this is how farm speed. I think people originally expected uh, Team Secret to play. Yeah. They pick very split push heavy cores that can create space for each other around the map. They utilize this three man rotation of uh, the Doom plus the Clockwork and the Lions to make things happen around the map. Exactly. I mean, and none of this kind of RTZ puck nonsense, yeah. you know what I mean? They're just frustrated. They're honestly just trying to frustrate Alliance right now, yeah. and it's working because you see Alliance, they're starting to push out with single cores, they're not really playing that tight ship that we saw last game, and they're just losing heroes one by one, and you start to see that frustration, what are we supposed to do in this situation, because if they directly find into them, Secret have so much farm that it could just go all wrong. This could be a nice envious room for Pi if Alliance try to fight this. They're still very, very hesitant. They've not found a fight in a really long time. Despite that double blink dagger, that's yeah. usually going to uh, be That's got to be an issue. Especially, yeah, when, when you're running that lineup. Where Where is your late game? In comparison to a, a Drown and a Voker. And while well, S4 has been caught out. The Sunstrike, this man is very much a dead man. The universe comes in to seal the deal, and that's the back gone for 50 seconds. Uh, with kind of plays like this, it, it looks like this is... I'm sure five going to be going to a game free here, Blitz, at the moment. At this rate, just because uh, Secret, they continue to off-arm you. And look at EGM, top, this is another kill for, for Invoker. RTZ's just styling on them this game. Yeah, they're just 
I, I think this is the part of the game where mentally they've kind of checked out a little bit where there aren't a lot of things that you can do secret. Even though they're playing passively, they still wake up Alliance once in a while with the gank. They say, oh, keep on your toes. Then Alliance feels a little bit more scared and secret find one pick off once in a while. Oh, a load of slides in and immediately getting boosted, beaten down by secret. And yeah, back to base, Afghe. Back to base. Border will come in. Oh, he's got a Chronosphere. Uh, he's not really got anyone else around to help him now. With a TP through from Bat S4, jumps in, gets the last one to Universe. Bulldog, nice Chrono on the back lines, holding back the heroes. Universe with the blade mail up, actually forcing out. Universe styling himself out of the base. He'll survive. They'll be the supernova, but Secret, they're coming in. They're trying to take it out, and they will. That's going to be two, three down, five back from Bulldog. Invoker will pop, but he's got the Aegis. Bulldog moving back in off the back of this buyback, looking for Puppy, but Puppy, he's got the blade mail. Doesn't matter, Bulldog will continue through, find the kill. But a secret, they found themselves to mid melee racks. Top range racks go down as well. Now, what, what is the plan here for Alliance? Boca, RTZ very much in, in, in a huge power of strength. A very good position this game. Can they punish Envy? He's been left behind. A little bit scrappy now for Secret. As they do lose off the carry, but space created. This is what you're talking about. He's having these two cores that just create space for themselves. And I'm sure that was the plan there from Envy. At least that's what he's telling the team. As uh, Arteezy is able to do a significant amount of damage to the tier three on the bottom lane. And it's, I don't know, Alliance, they do hold the base, but at quite a heavy cost. Yes. Losing two racks right there. You lost your tier three towers. The bottom tower is in shambles too. Already at half HP. Alliance finally finds some kills, but it's at the cost of their racks when Secret finally decide to group up and take a fight, and even then it goes quite well for them. The heroes that needed to get out got out, and Invoker's still alive. Bulldog was looking for something, but now Invoker's got that Lincoln Sphere, gonna be able to cancel out that Batrider's initiation, or at least force him to waste that four staff. And we saw Secret is always there with the counter initiation of the Lion, Pylite Die, having that Blink Dagger. Always quick to try to get that counter initiation hex off, and now Secret, their game becomes very formulaic. They can decide to go for the straight up push if they want. They know that uh, Team Alliance, they just don't have that damage to back up the Chronospheres. Maybe if they slip up like crazy, they could decide to go for this frustrating style of for hit and run pickoffs, then go for the immediate push. They have this objective in Roshan coming up in five minutes. Let's see what Secret want to do now that. Here in the jungle, moving around towards the mid, they could get a good wrap round as well. If the lights come out straight away, Universe looking in onto EGM. He's got the force, gets himself out. The sun strike is going to be on point. Another one for Secret S4 jumping in, but immediately the reaction is there. The combo coming through from RTZ S4 to get a load of finger off to load of heat gone. S4 shots as well, and they're trying to turn off the egg. They won't find it, but it doesn't matter. Ake's got to run himself. And at this point, really, you're just looking at RTZ 11 1 7. I think he's certainly made up for the performance in game one here. He's very, very much comfortable in his element. And there is nothing that Alliance can do to stop this fire, apart from Bulldog. Not, again with not that counter even initiation. that, indeed, this Lion so strong against the lead in that Alliance continuously want to look for. Bulldog will be able to time walk himself away. There's a buyback from AK, buyback from S4. S4 no lasso for 30 seconds in secret. They're just giving all the space they want to pummel into the tier 3. Now opening onto the racks. EGM, he's back on. Then we pods the BKB and RTG coming back in, styling them, pushing them back. And this is, I mean, Alliance really are holding on their best. But the two full sets of racks down, the bottom racks now exposed, and Secret is still very much ready to jump back into the fight. It's a 25,000 net worth lead at 29 minutes in. Oh, looking for Invoker. Artiz, he's just ready to come back in. They're looking to go straight forward. Loading against the cross on the puppy, but Universe again with the fog. Onto Bulldog, onto EGM, then trapped up in the middle of this one. EGM, he's going to fall. Artiz, jumping in, focusing on S4. A couple more touches will bring down the bat. And that is a die back from S4. Bulldog looking for the bashes, but he's going to need a fair few more. GG is called. Game two, just an absolute showing of the skill that you would expect from Secret's lineup. And if they're able to keep this up in game three, it's going to be a tough one for Alliance. But at the same time, if they whip up, whip up the same way in game one, Alliance still have, you know, every opportunity to take this series. But good to see at least Secret were able to bring themselves back.